Well, congratulations to AMG Mercedes for winning the prestigious Dewar Trophy, actually awarded by the RAC, the Royal Automobile Club, supporters of motoring and motor racing over the decades, and an interesting lineup of committee members, because this award is not always, it's not given annually, it's actually a, uh, only given if there's a specific degree of excellence to some technical achievement. And on the committee, Carl Ludwigsen, who we know well as a writer, photographer of enormous stature over the years in motorsport and motoring, uh, Alec Osborne, former BRM engineer, Pat Simmons, needs no introduction, and Steve Cropley of Haymarket, who's also on the European Car of the Year uh, committee, uh, an Australian, and the award has gone to the PU106A hybrid Formula One power unit. To our benefit, what we have is some wonderful high-res photographs of the 2014 Formula One engine, and I know, Scarbs, you're delighted to see these because we can see some further detail that we've never been able to uncover before. Yes, I mean, it's uh, it's a rare treat when uh, any manufacturer gives us uh, uh, an image of one of their uh, show engines, and Mercedes' uh, initial uh, image they released actually bore no physical resemblance to the actual race engine whatsoever. So they've released these pictures, and um, from from my knowledge of looking at the, the engine uh, installed on the car, I can confirm these are you know as close as we're ever going to get to actual images of the uh, 2014 power unit, uh, as you can sort of see in the first image. You know, it's it's all laid out there on top of two flight cases for us to look at. You have the you know, the petrol engine uh, to the left uh, with its turbocharger and then the orange cables going forwards to the, the battery pack and to the uh, power electronics. So this is very much completely accurate and something we can glean some some real detail through on uh, what is quite an innovative engine, obviously part of the reason they've won the, the Dewar Trophy in the first place, that they really have thought outside of the box, uh, as, you, as they say, to uh, produce a power unit that's really dominated the sport this year. This is the front of the engine, and this is where the Mercedes engine or power unit differs so massively from its rivals. This year, the engines have to be V6 engines. Lots of the architecture and sizes and shapes are fixed. And the turbocharger, which has to be a single turbocharger mount, mount along the car's sensor line, has to be there. What Mercedes have done is they've actually split the turbocharger into two. So... With a turbocharger, you have an exhaust-driven turbine, and then that links with a shaft to spin the compressor, which actually squeezes the air into the uh, engine, which obviously get, means you get more oxygen, you can put more fuel in, you get more power, and that's the, the benefit of a turbocharger. So what Mercedes has done, if we can now look at the front of this engine, you see this big um, circular element. I mean, it's, it, it's absolutely massive for a turbocharger, even though this is only a single turbo engine. It's a huge turbocharger, far bigger than what we can see on their rival's engines. And by putting the compressor at the front of the engine, what this allows Mercedes to do is to have much shorter runs from the turbo through the intercooler back into the engine, which improves turbo lag. It also takes away the compressor from the heat of the very hot turbine. Obviously, exhaust gases, you're talking about 900, 1,000 degrees, and you don't want that warming up the charge air because that reduces power, and it means you have to run larger intercoolers to bring the temperature back down to get your, your, your power targets. So Mercedes bringing that to the front has been quite a clever idea. And what you have in between these two parts sitting within that V of the engine is the motor generator unit, which actually recovers energy from the turbocharger while the engine's running. And having that in the middle of the shaft uh, means that you get slightly less of the uh, torsional problems that you would have if you just had a completely unconnected just a long, thin shaft running between the two sides of the turbocharger. Yeah, the biggest challenge for Mercedes most likely in setting this up wasn't just splitting the turbo, but to get the shaft that links them to actually work with you know, the, the rapid change in turbocharger speeds. Um, it wants to twist. Um, you know, you're going to get torsion on the vibrational issues, and Mercedes obviously managed to do that very well this year with no apparent turbocharger problems. Do we think the turbo is built in-house by Mercedes or do we think there are suppliers out there like KKK making them still? Well, it's not entirely clear because um, I, I was lucky to go to the um, factory at Bricksworth um, just over two years ago now. And while on a tour and they were showing us what was then obviously all the V8 parts, I did see a machined turbocharger um, a compressor casing. Uh, on a bench, uh, which was our first clue that turbos were going to be really massive this year. So I believe the casing is probably machined in-house at, at Bricksworth, but the vanes and some of the other parts inside may be farmed out to specialists. Obviously, you know, turbocharger vanes, very 
um, fine detailed fan blades, you know, twisted, have to run at very high uh, RPM, 125,000 RPM this can run up to, uh, and at very high temperatures. So it's likely that could be farmed out to a specialist, but uh, it's not information that I have in detail. Right, let's look at some of the other angles of the engine. Well, the other interesting thing that we can see on the engine here is if you actually look to the side of the engine here, is the exhaust. Now, we're used to seeing Formula One exhaust looking like um, a bunch of bananas, lots of pipes twisting around, merging into a collector and then jumping up and over the engine into the turbocharger. Um, that's the conventional, um, normally aspirated and also turbocharged um, format of exhaust for racing car engines because um, it's all about the resonance of the shock waves passing through the exhaust that help with the cylinder charge and actually make sure the fuel air mixture stays within the cylinder and doesn't try and disappear up the exhaust pipe. But what Mercedes have done is they've changed to this what's described as a log style exhaust and you can see it all wrapped in heat shielding there and what you have is rather than three very long pipes merging into one you have three very very short pipes almost merging immediately into a common um, secondary pipe uh, which then leads around back to the turbocharger mm. and as i understand this is more about m maintaining the pressure and the speed of the exhaust gases coming out of the engine going into the turbocharger so you get more power as a result of better turbo performance rather than more power as a result of better cylinder filling um, i'm sure there is some you know still some shockwaves going back to help with the cylinder filling on this design it's not something i'm massively knowledgeable about but you can see that Mercedes have really thought very differently. And this was actually a very late development into the program. The teams were only testing with this um, finally by the end of testing um, uh, before the season started. So before that, some of the teams were running with full tubular exhaust manifolds. And the benefit, aside from the power, is you can see that the exhaust really takes almost no space up at all within the side pods. It literally sits within the shadow of the V6 engine, which means you can bring the aerodynamics or the, the cooling uh, internally much tighter to the engine uh, with less obstruction from exhaust pipes uh, at the back of the car. Yeah, and, and what, do we, what material do we think those exhausts are made of? Um, it's my understanding that exhaust is still commonly made from uh, Inconel. Um, I think some teams have played with... Um, titanium uh, at various stages during the year um, but still it seems to be Inconel is um, one of the sort of the materials of choice but again it's something that the teams would be very reticent to uh, discuss if you went up and asked them openly what would you exhaust made of. Um, the other thing you notice is the exhaust is wrapped in heat shielding and this is something we know that Ferrari have played with later in the season. The hotter you keep the exhaust the less the exhaust gases cool which again increases the pressure at the turbocharger. So the whole exhaust package there is really cleverly thought out both from an engine and from a chassis perspective. The other interesting thing, if we can have a look at the top of the engine, these two big red eyes, which are always look rather comical when you see the engine out of the car, rather like <laughs> some kind of manic black frog looking over the top of the engine. Um, these are the inlets. So this is what's fed by the intercooler from the turbocharger. And this is where the air goes back into the V of the engine and to the, obviously, it's, there's no injection uh, units placed there. They're all actually direct injection into the cylinder and again Mercedes have created a very different shape to what other teams have done typically with a turbocharged engine you'll have those inlets feeding into just a very large pl plenum chamber a big box mounted above the engine and then very short inlet tracks feeding into each cylinder or in, into each throttle body and then therefore into the exhaust uh, the inlet uh, ports. Mercedes have gone something slightly different you've got this very high almost tubular like shape to the air box and it seems as though from those red inlets that, that it's almost there's a, an individual pipe molded within the carbon fiber plenum that actually sends the uh, compressed air straight down into the cylinders which again is potentially a, a slightly more effective way of doing things rather than letting the air just have yeah, sit in a large plenum above and then eventually be fed into the engine. Lastly, if we look there, you can see some orange cables, and this again shows us where the motor generators are on the engine. Obviously, the motor generators are the uh, what Mercedes describe as their e-motors or their e-machines, which both generate the power when you're off the throttle and when you're using uh, energy recovery, actually power the motor. So you have two of them on the car. The one with the cable bundle closest to the, uh, uh, us there, feeding up behind the turbocharger, so the MGU-H. So that's the one that we described mounts to the 
turbocharger and then the other one at the far side is the mg uk which is analogous to last year's curs you know 160 horsepower electric motor sits on the side of the engine and drives the front of the crank via a set of gears when you look at the the entire assembly this is almost exactly as it would be mounted in the car so you can see where the engine sits and then the battery pack which is this kind of bronzy gold assembly very reminiscent of mclaren uh, mercedes uh, 2009 battery pack that was mounted in the side pod that we actually used to get quite clear views of um that sits underneath the chassis uh, underneath the fuel tank area so literally the roll hoop would be almost directly above that battery pack and the little black carbon fiber uh, assembly on top of that is the part that houses the control electronics which are the clever bits of <coughs> excuse me the clever bits of electronics that then manage the power from the battery to the mgus and you can see it's you know it's very powerful it can hold over you know, four megajoules of energy to release during a, a lap um, but it's still quite a compact uh, unit and there's space it's now enough for space for the fuel to actually be at floor level either side of that when it's actually installed on the chassis. Very impressive, Scarves. Thank you so much for that detail. Uh, and I should just wind up by saying that Mercedes have won this Dewar Trophy twice before. And I know this will appeal to you, Scarb. Mm. Once in 1909, <laughs> yes. the Daimler company won it for their two sleeve valve engines of 28.8 horsepower and 34.4 horsepower, respectively. 132 <laughs> hours bench test and 2,000 miles at Brooklands. <laughs> And again in 2009 for their KERS system. So this in 2014 mm. is for the entire uh, power unit. And congratulations has to go to Andy Cowell, who is the managing director, of course, of Mercedes-AMG High Performance mm -hmm. Power Trains. Rather mouthful title for that company, but what a job they've done in Formula One this year. And, and brilliant that they've been able to put out these high-res photographs and get your amazing description, Scarves. Thanks so much again. And look forward to talking to you again very soon. And as I say, we're going to look at 2015 and some of the rule changes in Formula One for 2015. Thanks, Peter.